Hey everyone, it's Fox from Modelmaking.Guru here, back with part 12 of our build of the Revell Colonial Viper Mark II for emodels.co.uk. So we're back. Uh, right, let's crack on. Uh, you remember in the last video, um, I'd started to do the avionics bays. As you can see now, I have glued on the engines. Woohoo! They're now done. Uh, I've painted the side engines. Uh, and I have finished the avionics bays. Uh, they're all done. I shall give you some close up looks. Let's uh, give you a squeeze. Okay, so avionics bays all painted. Nice and, uh, nice and slightly shiny. As you can see, the technique I used, rubbing off the oil paint I'd put on, ever so slightly thinned, gave a nice, or gives a nice metallic look, but yet filthy and darker. Uh, and the fading round the edge makes it look quite nice. Uh, side engines, painted exactly the same as the engine here. It's just flat aluminium, then a wash of flat black, then a couple of coats of uh, Tamiya smoke. I've not faded around the edge oil paint yet, I'll do that sort of last of all. And the engines are now stuck on. And it's all looking rather spanky. So what should we be doing today? Well, today uh, we're going to check the focus, as always. Today we're going to bring back some of the highlights on the main fuselage with a quick dry brush of white. Just to accent the raised edges. Um, then we're going to get the, that should be once I've done a little bit of dry brushing oil paint around here that should be everything just about done then so it's time to then get the pilot in, get the canopy on and get the display stand done now display stand is in progress I have received the brass plaque to go on the display stand if you can see that it's rather spanky, very simple um, I found a place online, and apologies, I can't remember what the place was called. Uh, so I can't remember where I got it from. So that's going to go on the display stand. It's just etched brass plaque with a self-adhesive back. Um, now I say I can't remember where I got that from. Hunt around on the Googles, you'll find something. Uh, I also found a little place that did... I've already got one website that does display bases um, that I've used before. Now there's a pre-varnished... Uh, and pre-cut and routed around the edge but they're not square they're slightly curved and I really wanted a square one so I found another place that does just very simple either uh, beach or oh, uh, beach or mahogany or MDF routed square um, display bases brilliant I thought unfortunately it's such a small website that they can't do online payments you have to mail them and say what you want so I did that and they said they'd call me back with the with the price and the shipping and they never did so I've got, the dis I've got the plaque, I just haven't got the display base yet. So, uh, hopefully by the time this video goes live, I'll have received it and will have filmed it. So I'm hoping this will be the final video now. Um, I'm hoping. I hope a lot of things, they don't always happen. So, uh, stay tuned on that one. What we'll do first is we shall do a dry brush of white oil paint, just to bring back the highlights. For this, I've not got a MIG 502 paint, I'm actually just using bog standard um, artist soils, you can get these from any hobby shop uh, or art or craft shop this is just soft mixing white uh, make sure when you get, if you use a, a standard artist soils with a white, make sure you don't get a white that's got something else in it um, I did get one white that was iridescent white and it looked great apart from I suddenly realised afterwards um, it had little metallic flecks in it which were no use at all So that got thrown away okay all we're gonna do is we are going to dry brush as we've done before so I don't need to explain it to you um, but we're just gonna go around all the white areas of the ship as you see it's not white anymore um, but this will quickly change and this is just for subtle accents and maybe to fade some of the decals so I've got two brushes uh, a fat chisel edge brush and a small chisel edge brush both very soft so we shall crack on. I'll try and do this as quickly as I can now because I want to try and make this the last video. 
So before we do that, let me just double check the focus. Yes. Right, so you've seen dry brushing before, you know how it works. The problem of doing white paint on white tissue paper is you don't really know how much is left on because you can't see the paint. Okay, now as always, same process as before, just simply getting the erased edges, trying to avoid anything that's not actually white and this is going to be almost imperceptible really just to get the edges to show up it doesn't actually show up as white it just shows up as almost a slight fading of the the brownie color but what it does do if you can, you won't be able to see it but it does actually fade the decals a bit as well so I'm really just going around the edges but I'll probably do some on the on the panel itself. Just do that. I hope you can see this. Oops, funk. You can rub it with your finger a bit if you want to blend it. Go around the edge of the engines. This is one of those weathering techniques that's so hard to actually discern that you almost think, is it worth it? But ultimately, you know it's there. And you're making the model. So it depends how much of a perfectionist you want to be. If you're a good model maker, you want to be a perfect perfectionist. Trying to hold this so you can see it. I forgot to say I'd also painted these as well. The little, what I keep calling the pitot tubes. Don't actually know what they are. So, I'll bring this up close so you can see it. So, as you can see, when I get the focus on and when I get the camera in, the you might not come out on camera, but just here you can see this raised edge here is ever so slightly highlighted. Just a tiny amount. And that's what we're looking for across the whole ship. Just very subtle fading, highlighting. Being careful not to get it on parts that aren't actually white, like the engines. I'll show you this bit, actually this bit will stand out a bit more. It also helps blend in some of the previous dry brushing I've done. Let's put some more on. If you've gone a bit too far with the Starship filth or the engine grease on the white areas, you can you can use this just to pull it back a little bit. So you're being very careful here not to get it on the engine. So I'll show you that. Might get a better idea. If you see this part here, this little raised edge, that's just a slight, I don't know if you can see it on camera, that's a slight highlight. Fades out the decal a bit. Uh, if you weren't doing lots of Starship filth and other weathering and weren't making it dirty, it'd be a good way to just tone down bright decals. So that's all I'm doing. Uh, probably take me about an hour or so to do all this. So I'll go around the rest of the ship. Um, leave it to dry as always because it's an oil paint. I'll leave it to dry for 24 hours. And when we come back we'll get the pile in. And we'll get the cockpit canopy on. So, you know what I'm going to say. Back in a minute. Okay, right. The white dry brush has now had time to dry. Um, it's a very hard to see effect but I know it's there and it's... I'm a bit of a perfectionist like that. All that remains now to do is put the pilot in, stick the canopy on, and stick it on the display stand. A bit of a delay between the last episode because I've been waiting for the display stand to arrive. So, uh, Right, so without further ado, because this will be the last episode, so I don't want to hang around too long. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, because this has been going on for weeks and weeks and weeks, uh, I'm just going to dust inside the cockpit, make sure there's nothing in there. This kind of little 
fan shaped soft brush is great for dusting. So if you don't store your models in a display cabinet, if you have them on a shelf somewhere, they will pick up dust. <laughs> so it's, this kind of a brush is ideal for getting rid of dust and nonsense. So get you one. Give the pilot the quick dust. Uh, now I did leave his butt unpainted, but because there's paint on the seat, I'm going to use super glue for this. Now we can be a tight fit, and I can't guarantee this is going to work. Um, so, fingers crossed, let me just get my space helmet to be I've got a new space helmet um, actually my old one let me just double check this focus as always my old one is absolutely fine when I'm just working by myself medium to close up uh, this one has five different lenses that go from no different to normal to electron microscope close up and it's also got a little light so thanks to my mate Andy Busby who bought this for me uh, but this one's got a lens in that means I don't have to get up close to the model, so hopefully you won't get my head in shot. Of course, this could all be horribly wrong. And you'll probably still see my head, so hey. Right, so I have some Tamiya Super Glue, Tamiya CA Glue. It uh, can be hard to get hold of, so if you can find somewhere that can get some, um, grab a few. This is indispensable, it's really thin super glue. So it's perfect for. Um, this kind of modeling. Normal super glue from a tube can be alright but if you get the thick stuff it's really stringy and then you're just fighting strings of glue everywhere so yeah try and avoid the normal tube stuff. Um, right. Oh on a plus note just while I remember as well uh, eModels have now said that they're about to start stocking Tamiya Super Thin which I've been trying to get hold of for ages. It's a liquid poly like the Humbrol stuff and the Tamiya cement but it's as the name suggests, super thin, so it's great for just brushing into little panel lines and joins and things like that. Um, it's always been hard to get hold of in the UK, um, but eModels are going to be stocking it soon, so check out eModels' new website, which has now been updated. It looks fantastic. Check out eModels' new website, uh, which has all the spankiness, uh, and to get yourself, when they have it, get yourself some of their liquid cement. Their thin, to me, is super thin. It's really, really good. Right, let's get this show on the road. Some tissue. Yeah, is my kitchen roll? There's my kitchen roll. Okay, this shouldn't take too long. So I'll just make sure I've got some cement coming out. Yep, they're yep, all the cement coming out. Okay, I'm having some visor issues here. Hang on. It's a live show, folks. All from, well, live when I'm filming it anyway. I think I've actually got the, the worst possible lens here. Right, so I'm going to put some super glue on the seat. I hope you can see all this. I'm going to be quite generous because I need the pilot to stick in place and you're not going to see this anyway. Some super glue on the butt of butts. And then simply, a very shaky hands today, slot him in hopefully. Now it can be a tight fit because the front dashboard can go where the feet go. So don't force him, but just wiggle him around gently. Thankfully he's not gone in with any problems. Done! Uh, right, so he's glued in. All done. And now, we have the canopy. So I'll just put this to one side. Now, no doubt, many of you have the same hatred of canopies that I have. I hate them. Um, let alone the fact that you end up scruffing them, scraping them, getting residue on them, making them completely rubbish, checking your focus. Um, that's a living nightmare, but then gluing them on as well. You need to use the right products. You can't use normal plastic cement, because that will fog up the pl clear plastic. So you have to use special cement. Now I've had this in a bag ever since I painted it. So I'll just check it against the light. It looks a little bit dusty. Don't quite know how. So I've got my Dodo Juice Extra Soft Buffing Towel, which you can get from all good detailing supply stores. It's actually for car detailing, I think I explained before. But it's brilliant for, because it's so soft, it's brilliant for canopies. Apologies if that was out of shot. 
So, also make note I'm wearing gloves because I don't want to get any nonsense on the clip art. Now the canopy should just slot in thusly. It's got a little thing to lock in as well. I'm not going to push that down just yet. I'm going to dry fit it, make sure it fits. Fiddly time, shaky hands are helping. So that goes in perfectly. So gluing on your canopy, if you use the right glue, it's really easy. For this, I'm using Ravel's Contact to Clear. Uh, it's called a canopy glue. There are lots of different clear glues. Some people use white PVA glue, which you can do. Um, but it's always best to get a specific clear part glue. Basically, it dries crystal clear, unless you really mess it up. So, I mean, you don't want to get it on the clear part because you'll see lumps and bumps. But if it won't fog the clear part up, there won't be any vapours coming off that fog the clear part. That's the good thing about it. So what I'm going to do is take my canopy, evil, evil canopy, hate, hate clear parts. Take my canopy, I'm gonna apply, and I hope you can see this, I'm gonna apply a small, I'll tell you what, I'll use the brush that comes with it, it's probably gonna be easier. Bigger brush. Take a small amount of the glue just on the surfaces here on the little tabs. Notice how I'm doing it 90 degrees to the surface. And cut myself in a corner here. So glue on glue on and then simply drop it in place and if I'm lucky it should go in without any problems he says as it goes in with problems now the thing with canopy glue is it doesn't stick very very much straight away what I do need cotton bud so I've got a little bit on the canopy there oh no, it's actually a ding in the canopy brilliant okay so that doesn't feel like it's sticking I maybe should put a bit more on so what I'll do now is get my canopy glue again and just go around the gap I do apologize I've got really shaky hands today I don't know why Feed it into the little gap. Just so it can go in with capillary action. And stick the damn thing down. Now yeah, you do need to keep hold of it for a little while because canopy glue, like I say, doesn't stick straight away. If you watched Paul Bretland's video where he's making a mess of Schmidt. Now if I've got this wrong, I do apologise, Paul. Uh, if I remember rightly, when he was sticking a canopy on, it kept coming off as he was doing it. And that's what you do experience with canopy glue. It's not an instant stick. It doesn't melt the plastic. That's why you don't get all the vapours. I hope you can see this. I'm having to go close to my face so I can see it. So apologies if it's out of shot. That's it. I'm just going to hold this for a minute, and let it stick. Um, so yeah, it doesn't it doesn't melt the plastic to make the bond. It just well, nobody knows how glue works. It's a mystery. Uh, it just bonds to the two pieces, so you don't need to worry about having an unpainted surface so much because you're not looking to physically bond the plastic, you're not looking to weld the plastic. So I'm going to hold this for three or four minutes. So I shall not film that because it'll be very boring. And when we come back, we shall do the display stand. And then a couple of little pointers I need to do on the build, just because I've forgotten things I've forgotten to say over the course of the build. So, you know what I'm going to say. Back in a moment. 
Okay, canopy's on. Hoorah! All glued in. Uh, I've brushed some. Where are we? I have brushed some. Uh, dropping it there. Humbrol acrylic matte varnish just around where the glue was. Just checking my focus, you know what I'm doing. I've had some. Oh, yeah, I just noticed by the way, watching that other piece that I've just done where I was gluing the canopy on, I noticed the focus was completely out for ages, so I do apologise for that. Uh, yeah, so I've got some Humbrol matte varnish. Normally when I varnish, I use a spray varnish, but this is just for touch-ups. So I've gone around where the canopy glue was. Um, after I'd finished filming, the canopy, the canopy actually just came straight off. Um, I hadn't put enough glue on the canopy, so I put more glue on and stuck it back on again. Um, the canopy glue does, glow a does end up a little bit glossy where it goes on the bodywork of the model. Um, so we've just gone round the edges with some matte varnish and that should hopefully hide it, it's still drying. Um, I did notice as well, when I'd finished, that I had managed to get some canopy glue on my glove and on the top here and on the bit there. So I didn't panic. If you should use canopy glue and you do get it on the clear part where you don't want it, don't suddenly panic, you've not written your um, your kit off. If you're fairly quick, once the, the canopy is glued in place and isn't moving, um, I use this stuff, Goo Gone. Um, I had to hunt around to find it after reading up on the internet that this seems to be the best stuff to use. Um, if you do get something on your clear part, like glue, not so much plastic cement, because that's never going to come off, that's going to change the shape of the canopy, but if you get like the canopy glue, which doesn't melt the plastic, or even just little bits of schmutz or finger jam or whatever you get on there just get a cotton bud just very gently rub it over the the bit that's affected and then just use a soft towel like my dodo buffing towel just to take it off the reason you don't want to press down with the hard, with the hard cotton bud is because you'll scratch the canopy so if you can find some goo gone uh, i think it's from the u.s it's basically a citrus tar and glue remover now there are lots of citrus tar and glue removers around uh, we come across them all the time in detailing but i found goo gone's really good uh, just a tiny amount gets rid of it. So that got rid of all the schmutz on there. That's now glued in. Uh, there is a slight imperfection in the canopy here. You won't see it, but I can't do anything about that. There was some schmutz around it that I cleaned off with the goo gone, but it looks like a scratch or a, a slight manufacturing defect, so I, ca I can't get that out. I mean, I could have polished it, but I didn't notice it till I glued the canopy on, so or till I was gluing it on, if you saw. Uh, one last thing I'd forgotten as well, so I'll show you now. Uh, there's one last little bit of weathering I wanted to do, and I completely forgot. Um, I want to add a little bit of zing to these engines, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. This took two seconds. This is a graphite pencil. It's just a stick of graphite. Um, exactly the same as you get in your pencil, basically. So it's a pencil without the wood part. Um, gets off on your hand, so... Make sure you wash your hands after using it. All I'm going to do is scrape a little bit off. It goes everywhere when you do this, so you be careful with it. Scrape a little bit of this off. Thusly, you might be thinking, what the hell am I doing? Well, what I'm doing is this. Now once you do this, you can't seal it, because you'll lose the shine. What I want to do, is put a little bit of glimmer on these engines. So, just rub that off my hands. So, dead simple, finger and thumb, or just your finger, however you want to do it. Get it in the graphite, get it on your finger like that, and just very gently rub it. onto the edge. As I always say, as is the case with all my detailing techniques, it's very subtle. You might not even see it. I'm struggling to see it and I'm doing it. But it just gives a very, very slight glimmer and shine to, uh, to the edge. Now it's worth noting, I did these old paints about three weeks ago and they're still slightly sticky. So do be careful when you're oil painting. 
should give a nice, very slight bluey tinge and a bit of a shine to these metal parts. You won't see it, I doubt. Well, especially you won't see it if I'm holding it away from the camera like that, but... that I'll just quickly show you that if I can avoid getting graphite on my camera I don't know if you can really see the difference it's a tiny tiny effect but it just gives I mean if you you know you, you know when you draw with a pencil you get that kind of shiny metallic look to where the pencil line is I'll just check the focus because my focus is being awkward All right there we go um, so yeah you, it does give that, if you draw them with a pencil, you know that kind of the, the kind of effect it gives, that kind of slightly bluey tinged metallic look. That's all I've done. And you wouldn't even know it was there. But like I said before, I'm a perfectionist, so, so it gets it. So, I should go and wash my hand because it's now covered in Ming. It's very smooth. Um, and when we come back, we will stick this puppy on the display stand. Back in a moment. Right, okay, so I've washed my hands. No more schmutz. So now all that's left is to stick this on the base. The build is basically done. Um, when I do display bases, I do it one of two ways. I either go for a pre-made base like this one, uh, if I want it to look classy and spanky, or if I want to paint the base and have some sort of design on it, uh, I'll either go to my local wood supplier and get a piece of wood, but can be a bit of a fight with them sometimes. They can be a bit difficult, so... Um, I've also been trying to source places online to to get pieces of wood. Um, I don't have any of the woodworking skills at all to do anything like this. I don't have the tools, the know-how, so I don't even bother. I simply buy a pre-made one. Um, I was going to do a painted base for this, but sadly the, I've only just been able to find somewhere online that can do any size, any shape with routed edges type pieces of wood that are not varnished so I can paint them. But that hasn't arrived. It's going to be a while before that arrives. So I'm going to go with the pre-made base. Um, this puppy I got from a company called All Woods Direct. Uh, .co.uk. I think that's the URL. Um, they mostly do trophy cases and things like that. But they have a few stands. Display bases. Little pedestals and things. That are really nice. Velvet underneath. Self-adhesive so you can not mess it up. They also do uh, etched plaques. Either brass or silver, and they can etch in whatever speech you want. Um, and they're just self-adhesive as well, so line it up and stick it on. So we've got the base. Um, all we're going to do is take the brass rod. This is the same brass rod I've had the model in all along. All I've done is bend it, literally bend, uh, and sanded it apart from the very top and bottom where I need them to fit. Um, drill the hole in the base with a pin vise. That's, this is, I think this is a 2.5mm brass rod. Uh, I happen to have a pin vise that's just about the right size, so I've just pin vised that. I've not drilled it with a hand drill or anything like that. And all that remains to be done. I didn't sand the ends because these were almost a perfect fit anyway. So I didn't want to make them slightly have a slightly less diameter and be all wobbly. So I stick the rod in the model. Don't really need to show you this. And then... Holding the rod, not pushing the model down, that simply goes into the model base. And it will be still a bit wobbly still, there's still some play to it. It's not absolute tight fit, that's because you might want to pose it differently. I want to rotate this round a bit. If I can get my fingers on it. It's quite a firm fit in here, so this gives me some rotation. Because it's, it's just foam inside and it's holding it in place. And this can be moved around if I want to change the position. But that, my friends, is that. We are done. Build complete, painting done, on the stand, goes on the shelf, done. I'm quite proud of that. A um, couple of handy hints that I've meant to point out in other episodes, or some handy hints. Um, oh, well, one handy hint that I will tell you now, and I meant to tell you ways ago when I was doing the decals. When you go into the decals, um, you'll see on the decal sheet there's a call out for decal 39 that goes here above the avionics bay and it's the same on the other side 39 however it also says to put 39 under the exposed engine and the same on the other side 
Now, I may be not good at maths, but that suggests to me that there should be four number 39 decals. There aren't. There are two in the kit. There are two 39s and you're supposed to put four on. So decide before you start whether you want the decal 39 to be here and here or there and there. Um, I nearly did these two and then that would have gone hard wrong because then I've used both of them and there'd be nothing to put on this side. <coughs> so if you want 39 on the on the avionics bay, they do actually have a fair few a spare beware of blast decals, so I put them underneath the engine over the side. So yeah, it's a bit it's a bit rubbish that. They don't give you the right decals. Um, but we're all done. Now I've finished building it. Uh, and now I've built both the Mobius and the Revell Viper, which are basically the same kit. There's not much between them at all. I would say if you have a chance and you have the option, um, go for the Revell kit, not the Mobius kit. The kit itself is a brilliant one for a beginner because it's not too complicated, not a lot of parts. Some minor filling, which I kind of messed up. Some minor filling, so you can get your teeth into that. Um, but the big difference with the Revell kit and the Mobius kit, apart from the fact the Mobius kit's not distributed in Europe, really, or it's hard to get hold of, the Revell kit is the European version, is the decals. The Revell decals are far superior to the Mobius ones. They're crisper, they're clearer, and they don't fall apart when you move them around. So if you have a choice, go for the Revell. Um... If you can't get the Revell kit and you can only get the Mobius kit, if I remember rightly, there are some third party decal sets out there. Uh, or you might be able to get the Revell decals from Revell even though you've not bought their kit. Uh, there are also third party brass etch, photo etch parts from Paragraphics, P A R A G F X, I think, available to put um, custom photo etch brass details in the cockpit, in the avionics bay, and on the engines. They're quite good. And if you're going to light it, they have parts so you can hollow the engines out and put the grills in the back. Uh, if you're going to light the kit, uh, it would be a very good kit to light. Actually, I don't, I don't do lighting. I'm not that way inclined. So that's everything. I really hope um, you've enjoyed watching this, and I really hope I've been able to teach you at least something useful in all of these. It's been good fun doing it. Um, I'll post some pictures up of this in a moment when I finish waffling on, so you can have some proper looks. Um, but for a full gallery of pictures, go to go to my website, which is www.modelmaking.guru. That's dot G-U-R-U. Uh, that's my site. I've got a blog and I've got other builds and write-ups of builds and galleries of other things. I also have pieces for sale as well, because I, I end up selling most of these. It's probably up for sale at some point. Um, but it's modelmaking.guru. I want to thank the guys at eModels for letting me do this and for sending me this kit. It's been an absolutely great time. It's taken forever but I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed hopefully teaching you guys something and I've made some good friends in the process uh, through through your e-models and through, through the whole experience. Um, as I always say, um, go to emodels.co.uk. It's their brand new website. It's all funkied up now, so it looks great. Um, everything from models, equipment, brushes, paints, glues, cements, anything you need, most likely they'll have it. If they don't have it, you pretty much probably don't need it, as I always say. Uh, but yeah, go to eModels. Make them your supplier for your stuff, because they are top-notch. They're a really good gang of guys. A little bit insane sometimes. Um, but yeah, they're, they're really good gang of guys. Go along to their Facebook page as well, facebook.com forward slash eModels LTD. I've finally committed that to memory. So it's facebook.com forward slash eModels LTD. Brilliant place to hang out. Post pictures of your builds look at other people's builds. Uh, eModels will also let you know about new things that are coming up that they're going to have, like the extra thin Tamiya cement, model kits, other things like that, uh, weathering guides, all kinds of stuff. And it's a nice little community on there, so just go and hang out. Um, but that will do us. Thank you very much for watching. I will be back soon, hopefully, with another build. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm doing another one for eModels, so stay tuned. I think I know what I've asked them if I can do, I just don't know if they can get it. So it's up in the air at the minute when or what that will be. Um, I do have another build going on on modelmaking.guru of the uh, Ravel um, Mackie Raider. That's just started, so go along and have a look at that. But uh, we will be back. Or hopefully I will be back with another build free models fairly soon. So stay tuned for some funky pictures. Uh, thank you again for hanging out. I know I waffle a bit. I really should shut up now because I'm using all the words. Um, 
but thanks very much again guys at eModels, thanks very much you guys for watching got any questions contact eModels, contact me contact the police, contact International Rescue, no don't really I'm losing the plot now, it's a really hot day and I'm really tired um, so yeah any questions at all put them on the comments under this video or on the Facebook page thank you very much again we will see you soon but as I always say until next time Adios Amoebas